Today we're going to get just a little technical and talk about speaker impedance. I know this is something that's confusing to people. And our question comes from Mark in Manhattan, New York. And Mark writes, can I change a 6-ohm speaker into an 8-ohm speaker? Easily or at all? My receiver requires five, uh, for my 5-channel system to be all the same at 8 ohms. Thanks, Mark Palmer. <clears throat> well, first off, Mark, you, you can't change the impedance of a speaker easily and in most cases at all. I mean, there are goofy things you could do, like put a, a resistor in series or in parallel to try and even it out. But um, just in general, your system doesn't really require that. It might say it does, but it really doesn't. So I wouldn't worry about it. So I think you're okay. But let's, let's look a little deeper. Let's, let's, let's figure out you know, what does all this mean? And I, I know uh, in the next few days we're also going to have another question. And I do want to try and explain loudspeaker impedance, what it means, uh, what causes it to be a specific impedance. So here's the deal. The drivers and the crossover within your loudspeaker, but mostly the drivers, will set the impedance of the speaker. So if I were designing a loudspeaker, I would want, let's just take a, a little two-way. We'll take a tweeter and we'll take a woofer, okay? And depending on the drivers I choose, I could choose 8-ohm drivers or I could choose 4-ohm drivers. That's, that's a choice that, that as a designer I can certainly make. And most people choose 4-ohm drivers, far more. It used to be everything was 8-ohms because back in the days of tube amps where we had transformer coupling on the output, you really didn't like low impedance and you certainly didn't like speakers that would bump up and down in impedance because as it goes up and down, that drives a tube amplifier nuts. I mean, that's the worst thing you can do. And adding a transformer to the output of a power amp is the second worst thing you can do. But there will be those of you that will argue with me. I love tubes and power amps as long as they're on the input stage. On the output stage, unless it's an OTL, an output transformerless uh, amplifier, then, then I, I, don't think, I don't think it's a good idea to put a transformer in that, but, but, but I diverge. So the impedance of a speaker is set by those drivers. And then we have a crossover network that hopefully doesn't add or detract from those impedances. So let's imagine a typical low-cost two-way loudspeaker crossover. For the tweeter, all I'm going to have to do is take a single component, a capacitor, and put it in series with the driver. So when the frequency goes up to a certain point or below a certain point, it will pass current or it won't pass current. So in base frequencies, low frequencies, if my capacitor is designed properly, no frequency, no energy will travel through that capacitor and the tweeter will make no noise. As the frequency goes up, now all of a sudden my capacitor begins to start working and passing energy and at the highest frequencies all the energy is going straight through my capacitor and into my 4 ohm driver. So now it's 4 ohms and that's what's coming, out, or 8, depending on what I have. The woofer well, here we, we need kind of the opposite, right? We, we, if we put a capacitor in series with a woofer, it's going to act like a tweeter, right? So that'll only roll off the bottom end of the woofer. And, and this is done in, in, in a number of small bookshelf speakers. We don't want the woofer going too low, so they can put a capacitor in series, but I think it's kind of rare that they might do that. What we put there is another element called an inductor. An inductor is a coil of wire, usually with a bits of iron inside of it. And an inductor does the opposite of a capacitor in terms of frequency response. An inductor will pass everything at a low frequency because it's essentially just a coil of wire. But as the frequency goes up, it starts developing a magnetic field which resists 
because you're, you're taking energy to create this magnetic field, that energy uh, is no longer going into the loudspeaker. And as the higher the frequency goes, the, the less it is. So um, that, that will make sure that the woofer reproduces low frequencies, but as frequency goes up, that woofer will stop reproducing sound as it crosses over to the tweeter, hence the name crossover. So we choose the impedance by the driver, and we hope that our crossover honors that in a relatively flat manner at the crossover point from woofer to tweeter or mid-range or whatever we have. The actual impedance of the speaker determines how many watts your amplifier is going to come and give you for a certain amount of voltage. A whole other subject that we will discuss on a later video because sometimes these get to be a little too technical and for that I apologize. We, we want to just absorb little bits at a time as we go along, hopefully having some fun along the way. Thank you for your question. I think you just go right ahead and hook those speakers up and don't worry about converting them. You will be just fine. Thanks.